Hey, what's up guys? Zeke here. Let's go over some questions about titanium valves. So welcome back. Let's go over titanium valves. I get a lot of questions during the week, whether it's through a phone call or whether it's through email or somebody's direct messaging us through social media. So these top five questions we've come up with are questions we get asked a lot. So let's get started on these titanium valves. Now, most applications, you don't need titanium valves for, for typical type engines, say a street application or something of somewhat of a mild application that you're running. So again, titanium valves are not for all applications and these questions will hopefully help you in your engine. So let's get started. The first question, what type of coating do you use on your titanium valves? Well, we've used several coatings throughout the years. We've used in the past over 10 years, it's called a chromium nitride coating. That's applied with a certain thickness on the valve that we use, and it's applied throughout the whole valve. So from the top to the bottom, the coating is applied on that particular valve. The second question is, I'm building a twin turbo engine, can I install titanium valves? This is a great question, we get asked this a lot. Typically, if you're building a turbocharged engine, it all really depends on what type of fuel that you're using uh, to use titanium valves. So if you're using methanol or alcohol, properties of that type of fuel maintain EGTs really, really low, especially on the exhaust. So it allows you to run titanium valves on both sides, intake and exhaust especially. A lot of ProMod applications, they use nothing but titanium valves on both sides. And again, they use this type of fuel uh, in those type of applications, so it allows you to obviously go that route. Now, on the other spectrum, if you're running race fuel and it's a turbocharged application, you really have to see how much EGTs or how much exhaust temperature you're really running in that area to actually run a titanium valve on the exhaust. In a lot of cases, we go ahead and we run a stainless, say our super alloy competition plus uh, valve on the exhaust, and then we go ahead and we run a titanium valve on the intake side. That's in a lot of combinations we've done. We still do it today. So let's go to the third question here. And what is the best guide material to use on your titanium valves? Another great question. So best material guide, usually you want to run a bronze type guide. Now there's lots of materials out there in bronze, whether it's an Amco 45, we use a lot of copper bronze, which is fantastic. Both properties and material work really, really well. So you want to use a bronze drive type guide. And why? Because it, it dissipates the heat very well. Lubricity is very good for the bronze type material. It's where it's a cast iron type guide and that retains a lot of heat. And it typically retaining a lot of heat will actually uh, have a lot of concentrated heat throughout the stem area of the valve. So it, it can have some growth spurts that can occur throughout the titanium itself. Typically not a good idea uh, to have a cast iron type guide. So, Usually want to replace the cast iron and go with a good bronze type material type guide. Um, let's go to the fourth question. How long do titanium valves last? Well, this is, I tell you, I mean, if we had, <laughs> if, you know, if we knew the lottery numbers, we could tell you how long the titanium valves is usually elongation. You know, you get to the point where a drag race engine or road race engine, you're sitting there lashing this engine two to three times. It's usually time to replace them. I mean, some larger valves, now I'm talking about 11, 30 seconds stem valves, you usually sometimes get anywhere from 10 to 12 to 15 thousandths worth of stretch. That's about time, anywhere in the double digits, it's about time to replace uh, the valves. You can characteristically also see if there's any type of seat wear throughout the valve. That usually is an indication to replace the titanium valves. Also any type of stem wear throughout. That's also a good indication that you need to replace them. 
Um, so all these things really have to do with maintenance. You know, when you're running titanium valves, you have to do much more maintenance to the engine than you would on stainless steel valves. Let's go to the last question. So last question here is, can you use titanium valves on the intake side and stainless steel on the exhaust side? Kind of answer this in question two. You can, absolutely. And we use this a lot for a lot of different combinations that we run stainless steel exhaust and titanium intake. You want to always, always look at valve train mass and weight overall. So titanium is always looked at because of the weight. You know, you got a valve that's obviously 40, 42 percent lighter than a stainless valve. So if you're comparing apples to apples. So you always want to look at what's the bigger of the two, and that's always the intake valve. So you want to obviously lighten up quite a bit of that intake valve uh, to grab some of that mass over on the valve train and lighten that up quite a bit. Um, that's about it. So those are the questions that we get asked uh, every week. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.